supplements. So I understand that you you like whole food and, and so not, not a big fan of supplements, but do you feel in, you know, in the modern world that we need, is there any supplements that you take and that we, you feel that people really should take? Or? Yeah, I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't say I'm anti-supplement. Um, right. It all comes down to the biomarkers, right? But yeah. before going there, um, so polypharmacy is indeed a thing. And, you know, it, it's essentially defined as taking too many drugs, you know, uh, and potentially even supplements. So older adults who um, take more medications uh, generally have worse health than older adults of the you know, same age that take less. So, um, you know, I don't think most people are considering that. I think I, I see a lot of people in the uh, aging and anti-aging community um, that are like, well, I'll take all of these senolytics or these quote unquote senolytics. Many of them have increased lifespan, but nowhere to the magnitude of what the calorie restriction does. So, and, and also in many of these studies, these quote unquote senolytics, and again, I put that in quotes because you know, even though I do uh, studies in mice uh, and have done studies in mice, you know, if you're basically giving a mouse rapamycin or pick the supplement of choice, NR, NMN, whatever, and it increases lifespan, you know, by five to 10%, what people fail to uh, uh, consider is that these animals are living in a cage for the duration of their lifespan, and they're eating a specified diet, a grain-based diet that isn't very high in fiber and, uh, well, besides going there. So, you know, most people don't replicate it. It's essentially a jail diet. So, you know, you're living in a box and you can't go anywhere and your diet is chemically defined, even though it's whole food. So taking one of those, you know, quote unquote, senolytics, will that extend lifespan for someone who's moderately active and not living in a cage and, and, and is, you know, I don't know, it's unknown because those experiments haven't been done in the animal systems. Now, if you're going to take rapamycin and metformin and NR and M M NMN, there are no studies or all, but yeah, actually I'm confident to say there are no studies that have looked at the multiple supplement approach for taking senolytics for extending lifespan. You know, there are few, you know, few studies that have looked at, for example, rapamycin and metformin, but not in terms of lifespan. But yet I see a significant uh, proportion of the aging uh, slash age, anti-aging community who are in this polypharmacy phase and without actually doing the blood test to show, okay, this is what my data was before I started taking these things. And this is my blood test data now, whether it's biological age or pick your given metrics. So there's a lot of faith-based supplementing going on. So to go back to the question, are you anti-supplements? I'm not. Right. I just prefer, I prefer to see data, to show data in on yourself that it's safe, to show data on yourself that you've actually improved something. Uh, and if you can show that, have at it. Like I just posted a uh, carnivore diet video. Now, I'm not anti any dietary ideology. If you can show me data that your, your, your biological age data is optimal or close to optimal, good luck, good for you. I'm happy for you. I literally have no skin in the game. My interest is making sure you're actually showing data, objective data, that you're on the right road. So, but most people would say, oh, it, it's terrible. How can you just be optimal eating just meat? So that idea also for me is the same with supplements. Now, what do I supplement with? So um, my diet was terrible when I was a kid. I would eat whole boxes of junk food, um, you know, and decades of doing that. In my early 20s, I was diagnosed with a, uh, an atrophied thyroid gland. I'm not saying that caused it. I don't know if it's a genetic thing. I, I can't imagine that my diet and my youth helped it though. Um, not eating real food and just eating junk food. So being lean, but eating off, subsisting off of poor quality foods can't be a good thing for your thyroid. Um, so yeah, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism early in my 20s. So I take levothyroxine for that. And then uh, I supplement with vitamin D in the winter because here in Boston, for the, you know, the winter months, the Northern latitude, uh, the sun, the UV isn't strong enough for my skin to make vitamin D. So I take vitamin D, but not, not a super large amount. I take less than a thousand IUs a day because for me that gets into the, um, I think it's 75, what, whatever the units are, what is it? Um, 75 nanomolar, somewhere in that, you know, so maybe it's a little more than a hundred nanomolar. I'm in the 30 to 40 range from nanograms per million, which is less than a hundred nanomolar which uh, a few meta-analyses have shown, shown may be optimal for reduced all-cause mortality risk. So for me, taking that much vitamin D puts me in that range. Uh, whereas I've seen people mega dosing, you know, um, which again, where, what's, what's the data, right? So, uh, and then I also take a, um, so that's only six months out of the year that I'm taking vitamin D, whereas I take the thyroid every day. And then I supplement with a methylfolate, methyl B6, sorry, methyl, methylfolate, methyl B12, uh, B6 supplement, uh, because my homocysteine levels are around 15 
and based on the literature, less than nine may be optimal. So if I do nothing, my homocysteine for whatever reason wants to be elevated. Uh, so I found that taking um, that, that, that stack, you know, of the methylate, uh, methylfolate, methyl B12 and B6, it brings my homocysteine down by, by about 10%, which it's not great. It's only about two units, but that's still better than nothing. So other than that, I um, track my diet every day. So I make sure I hit the RDA, um, at least the RDA for all the vitamins and minerals, um, or at least the average RDA, you know, so say if I, if I eat a certain way on a, on a Monday and I don't get enough of, I don't know, thiamine or, you know, vitamin B1 on a Monday, I make sure that, that, you know, well above that the next day so that the average value is at least higher than the RDA, at least for one or two or three day basis. So, but that said too, along the diet lines, I also did a deep dive literature review on almost all of the macro and micronutrients in terms of what's optimal. Uh, for example, like I have videos on vitamin C and vitamin K. So I, for many of the um, nutrients, um, you know, uh, micronutrients, I, I take way more than what's recommended because I believe that there's enough evidence to suggest higher amounts of certain nutrients may be optimal for uh, disease risk and potentially longevity. And I'd argue that, you know, someone could say, well, why, why are you, you know, taking that leap? You know, I'd argue that science is slow. You know, the, you know, it may take decades for, you know, the scientific consensus to catch up and say, all right, well, this should be increased. Whereas if you look at enough evidence on your own, you can say, well, I'm not going to wait for the science to catch up on this. And it's a low risk strategy because I'm not, you know, I'm not taking it from supplements, I'm not mega dosing, I'm getting it from food. So at worst case, I can urinate these things out. Um, so for many nutrients too, I mega dose, but through diet um, with the goal of further optimizing my health. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.